Okay, boys and girls, today we're talking about... Okay, boys and girls, today we're talking about the best lighter you can carry for survival. And they were taking a look at the lighter that I carry, always carry, in my personal survival kit and explaining why I carry this lighter in particular, kind of break down why I like lighters like the peanut lighter, and why I think that this is the best lighter you can carry. Let's jump into it. Now, before we get too far into this, and I understand that there are a lot of different lighters and types of lighters out there. You know, there's even electric lighters, there's, you know, uh, butane, there's all kinds of crazy things out there. But I want to say that I think that this lighter in particular, the peanut, embodies a lot of characteristics or a lot of good characteristics for my specific environment. So I don't think that this is necessarily the end all to beat all lighter for every situation or any situation, but I think that the peanut lighter for Alaska and for the type of conditions that we go through here makes for the best choice. So here's why. So the first thing with the peanut lighter, the first thing that is nice about the peanut lighter is that this thing is a fully sealed unit. So you can see it has a nice thick o-ring uh, right about there. We guys see that little black bit. And that means that this thing always has, um, this little guy always has fluid in it. If you guys can see there, hopefully. The wind is kind of pushing it around. But uh, this thing always has fluid and is always ready to go at any time of the day. The other thing that is nice about the peanut lighter, though it kind of is a pro and con to it, is that because there's really no wind protection against it, you can put this just about anywhere. So if you got to get into a really tight spot, you know, start a really hard thing to light, this thing is going to be able to get into just about any spot in any place. And of course, this is also hands-free. So unlike a butane lighter where you have to hold down, you know, a button in the moment you let go, it stops feeding the fuel. You know, this thing is you fire it up and then you basically can take it, put it wherever you want, and um, it will start a fire that way. So those are some of the biggest things that I like about it. But the ultimate reason why I think that this is a very bomb-proof lighter is because of the fact that it is not, it does not use pressurized gases so or electricity. So in Alaska, not so much in this time of year, but especially in our winter months, electricity or things that are battery powered and things that use pressurized gases like butane do not do very well out in the wild and that is primarily because one for pressurized gases uh, they have they work they tend to get very liquid when it gets very cold out so at temperatures like negative 10 negative 20 or even in the positives like 20 above th or even 20 above or 10 above, you know, the, the teens or single digit positives, uh, those fuels tend to become too much of a liquid that they are not able to properly aerosolize and combust the way that they should. So a lot of times with butane lighters and other such things, unless they're kept on your body, like right next to your body, and they're getting heat from your body, they will not effectively work. And so that is the biggest disadvantage to them. And moving over to things like electric or battery-powered lighters, once again, um, they don't necessarily suffer from the exact same issue, but the cold drains batteries. It is harder on batteries than the warm temperatures. So you can end up finding you're either A, getting a lot less battery life out of those, uh, those particular electric or battery-powered lighters, or you're not getting any type of life out of them. I know one of the hardest challenges to filming in the winter is keeping cameras alive. So trust me, uh, the impact on battery life and battery use is definitely present. So once again, going back to traditional lighters like this uh, peanut lighter or like Zippos, and one of the primary reasons why I EDC a Zippo is that they're a much simpler means of fire starting. And what you do is you put a highly flammable uh, gas in here, it feeds up through the wick and the wicking uh, kind of compound that you use or the wicking type of agent and it just sits there and slowly uh, evaporates into a kind of vapor that can be ignited very readily and very easily. And so um, with lighters like this and with the Zippo, they are very, they're far more simple and once again 
far easier to use because you're not sitting with a tank of gas that has to hopefully vaporize. You're dealing with a much smaller quantity of actual flammable gas that is already in a type of vaporized state because of the way it sits in the wicking compound and or the wick itself. So that makes these lighters far more bomb proof and far more weather proof when it comes to temperatures. So that is the primary reason why I like the peanut lighter. Of course, like I said, it does need to be any type of survival lighter should have O-rings and be sealed for two reasons. One, it makes sure that you do always have gas or propellant or, uh, you know, lighter fluid in your lighter itself. But it also means that if your lighter is dropped or exposed to water, that it will not go bad because one of the biggest disadvantages to especially things like Zippos and the peanut lighter here is that if they are exposed to water in an unprotected state, they will lose their fluid and be rendered virtually useless. So yeah, they, they definitely have that as their biggest con to them. But once again, if you have a proper sealed unit like this here, where you can seal it up nicely and it's all good, then you should be absolutely rock solid. Now I will say, the peanut lighter isn't the only name in the game. Exotac at least did make a version, I believe it was called the Titan Light, that was a similar type of premise to the peanut lighter, but it was, I believe, a little bit bigger in length and in uh, diameter. But essentially, whether it's the peanut lighter like this, whether it's a Zippo, whether it's a Titan Light, whatever, this is my preferred method of starting fires, uh, or lighters, I should say, for carrying in the wilderness because they're very simple, they're very user-friendly, and they work every time you need them to, whether it's 20 above, negative 20, 70 above, negative 70, <laughs> you know, uh, this is going to be there and work for you every single time. So that is the ultimate survival lighter for me. Like I said, this is very much situationally dependent in, for people who live, you know, closer to the equator where it doesn't really get cold in the winter. You know, this might not be as valid a point. You might always be able to rock a Zippo or a Bic. I know Bics are super, super loved, but once again, Bics also do use a liquid fuel to them, and so I caution a lot of people who carry Bics, you know, coming up here or operating in the outdoors uh, in the winter, don't rely on a Bic lighter because that Bic, if it does get cold, will no longer be able to aerosolize the fuel that is in the actual lighter itself, and therefore it will not be of any use to you. So anyways, that is my experience and the reason why I carry a peanut lighter in my survival kit, my personal survival kit, for emergency fire starting. As always guys, God bless, and I'm out.